amazing job. Please do not touch the dial. Keep watching. Thank you. A warm welcome as you join us here on Kaftan Television. This is Joy Asonyo Live. And our focus on today's edition of the program would be on achieving uh, a government of national unity in the new administration. Well, the president-elect, Asiwaju Ahmed Bola Tenubu, has been encouraged to assuage the feelings of perceived disparity among some parts of the country. He has been advised to disregard political inclinations in the past elections and embrace all of the all parts of the country in the new administration. How can this be achieved? We'll be discussing all of this with Prince Mustafa Muna Audu. He's a political analyst and member of the APC Presidential Council. Many thanks for being with us this evening. Good evening, Joy. I'm so happy to be here. You're welcome. Now, before we get into uh, the government of national unity, let's talk about the gubernatorial polls that are coming in a few days. And we are seeing the intrigues and we are seeing the drama around it. When you hear about the endorsement of political parties or the moving away of a structure of a political party for another, is that something we should embrace in our democracy or it is, it is uh, what, what deepening democracy is about? Yeah. Um, first of all, before I get into that, uh, I want to congratulate you on, on this show. And I, thank you very much. I hope much. that it continues to grow and you continue to grow as well. Thank you so um, much. To answer your question, it is part of improving our democracy, the ability to interact with people, the ability to negotiate, the ability to align and realign. Uh, it's all part of the political process and people have now seen that the power is actually with them. So you've seen governors in the last few you know, days and weeks since the presidential election going around their, their constituents, appealing to them, making sure that they show what they have to offer. Others have taken advantage of the new wave of, of other political parties that have come into the foray. And you know, they're taking advantage of what has happened in the presidential election to project themselves. So I think, as a politician, this is very interesting. Although those parties are competition to my party, I think it's very healthy. There is nothing wrong with, with healthy competition. Mm. If you look, for example, the automotive industry, you have Mercedes, you have BMW, right. you have Audi. Three of them I just mentioned are German companies, but they are competing for market share around the world. So mm. that's how we should be. APC, PDP, the Labour Party, NNPP, and any other party that has the, you know, the pull and and the, the, just like SDP and a few right. others that have appealed to people. I think it's very important that we grow this. It, it means that. For example, we cannot take the people for granted. Mm -hmm. Performance is critical because if we don't perform, Nigerians, I believe that Nigerians have given us one last chance. The APC, this is our only chance. We have the next four years to prove our mettle. We have the next four years to show that we have what it takes to develop the Nigeria of our dreams. And this cannot be done, obviously, by ourselves alone. We have 200 million Nigerians. Less than half of that are in the APC. So we want a party. I think we're about 40 million members in the right. APC, 42 million members in the APC. So mm. that's about 25% of the country. That means that there's another 75% out there. Of course, not everybody's part of the okay. voting population, but it's important that we continue to grow, we continue to reach out. Um, we appeal to the people in the different zones. We appeal to young people is critical. 
young people have been an essential ingredient of transforming the electoral process. We are the drivers, we are the engine room, and we have shown that if young people are not part of governance, if you don't look at the TV, look at your leaders and see faces that look like your own, you cannot carry young people on board. So I think this is critical and this is going to affect different states. We may not see such a swing as we saw in the presidential, mm. but a lot of parties that won would take a bite of what they've never had before. So, for example, Labour Party will get a few new states. They've right. never had a state before. I honestly believe, especially in the Southeast, they'll take they'll a take few. Um, other parties as well, if you look at the dynamics, mm. uh, depends on either ethnicity or religion or youth. Those are the three main factors that came into play in this electoral circle. So I think that would be broken down state by state. And each state now would now appeal whether it's the religion that matters most to the people or it's the ethnicity or just, you know, having young people in office. So I think this is very critical. And the governors, a lot of the governors have seen how important this is. is. I've seen our APC governors going everywhere now. Exactly. You know? I've seen them in churches. I've seen even Muslim governors yeah. kneeling down yeah, at the church. pulpit. Yeah. Yes, in church. This is what governors should be. Yeah, and because previously it was more or less a given, you know, because there was just the ruling party and one opposition. Mm. But now it's, the doors have been swung open. So you as a governor, if you've not worked, you are on edge. Even if you've worked Work. and you've performed, you're it's still not exactly. sure what's going to happen. And that's the beauty of democracy. That's, you know, this is the fourth republic. We've tried it many times. And the thing about Nigeria is that because we're a bit impatient, we've not had the time to follow through on the other republics. But this time around, this is 20, I think 24 years now mm -hmm. of democracy, and it grows with time. Everything grows. We keep comparing ourselves to the US, exactly. but the US has over 200, 200 years, years exactly. of democracy. So if we're not patient enough, if we don't follow the process, and I honestly believe this is one of the best elections we've ever had. These are the real figures. You know, before the previous elections, overnight, 4 million, 5 million, mm. sometimes 8 million votes show up from exactly. nowhere. With the Beavers, it's impossible. The accreditation is done instantaneously. So if you're not accredited, then you cannot vote. And if you look at the numbers, it shows we have 95 million registered voters. voters. A lot of that is fake. Beavers has shown that it's just fake. There are multiple registrations. Some people have died. Some people have relocated. So there are many things that, you know, have shown that. You that think that you, you would also say that the 80, 87 that collected are fake as well? It's absolutely. Empty. Absolutely. That's, that's just fact. Mm. Because and not people, apathy, because a lot of people thought that um, uh, Nigerians collected these voter, uh, these voter uh, cards and refused to come out on that day. I mean, we looked at the presidential elections. Only about 25 million actually voted, 24 points. That is our something. real voting number. If the voter apathy, no more than 10%. You and I both know, every single Nigerian both knows that they came out either because of ethnicity, religion, or the young people wanted to speak. No, everybody knows that in their own polling unit, they've never seen so many people. Mm. So how then can the number be less than the other elections, which we didn't see anybody, which was much less, yet produced a lot more oh, numbers. Yes. So it is clear that with the advent of technology, with the advent of instantaneous accreditation, because when you are verified on beavers the beaver synchronizes immediately with the inex server and it verifies is mr a that, yeah, that part of in, exactly. in the system yes this is mr a this is my fingerprint this is my, my picture what, yes once it matches then you are now allowed to vote 
this has shown that the actual number of registered voters is not the same as the actual number of real voters. And we will see. We can judge over time. God willing, we're alive for the next 4, 8, 12 years, 16 years, mm. 20 years. You would see 4, 2, 3, 4, 5 election cycles. And you would see that these numbers would be round about the numbers that you begin to see. It's just clear. There's no way previously you have 500 people registered in the polling unit and you see 499, right. 498 showing up, yet you don't see the queue. You know, so it's not real. You mentioned something very important. And let's talk about this bad work on, uh, effect where people just vote because, I mean, it seemed to be, this person seemed to be popular on, on, on social media. Yes. And we've also um, also seen people who do not necessarily have interrogated the candidate Absolutely. or uh, do not even know, like in some cases, I, I interviewed several people in the FCT who said, well, I just voted Labour Party. Yes. Not because I knew who the House of Representatives right. is or who the... Um, who is vying for Senate in the FCT, I just voted Labour Party. Doesn't that concern you? And what do you think, uh, do you think it will really affect the chances of the APC in the Guba polls? Uh, to be honest, for me, as a young politician, I don't think that's a cause for concern. I think that's cause for learning. Why would the young voters say they are not interested why would the young voters not want apc or pdp why would they go and vote for someone just because it's not apc or, or PDP? pdp these are extremely important questions for us to survive going further after these four years we must answer these questions honestly and genuinely with ourselves i'll give you an example in kaduna and okada rider was at a meeting labor party meeting picked up the ticket rather cheap Guess what? He's in the House of Representatives today. I have uh, a schoolmate of mine who was like two years my junior in mm -hmm. school. He's from Edo State, uh, Honorable Esso Yahweh. Picked up the Labour Party form, never really been in politics. And guess what? He won from Edo State. Mm. So people have had apathy because, or not apathy, people are rebelling simply because they have given responsibility first to PDP, then, then to, to APC. APC and have not had their intentions met. They've not been satisfied. I, I would not lie, I'm an APC member. I believe wholeheartedly in the APC, but we didn't perform. We didn't do well. Our scorecard is low. And the That's only, huge coming from you. Absolutely. And the only reason why we won, there's only one reason, because His Excellency Asiwaju Bola Metinubu and Kashim Shetima have the capacity to transform Nigeria. So when you look at it and you look at their track record and you compare them to the other candidates of the other parties, you'll see that these two, from what they've done in Lagos and Borno, if you see the interchange, the roads in mm. Borno, if you see what Lagos... Uh, Asiwaju came in in 99 and put a 25-year plan which expires next year. He planned for presidency 20-odd years ago. These are the kind of leaders we, we need. Nigeria needs someone that is not living for four or eight years. Nigeria needs someone that will come in and say, this is our 25-year plan wow. that migrates to a 50-year plan. And this is what we expect for our children and our grandchildren. And successive governments will come and build on this. This is what will make Nigerians truly happy. And I think that's why a lot of people have shown some form of rebellion, especially young people. I'm a young person in the APC, and I know how many young people have reached out and said, listen, we love you, we like what you do, we believe in you, but please leave the APC, it has mm -hmm. no room for young people. Right. And, and I tell them, you know, we all cannot be on the outside. In order for you to sweep the room, you one person, two people must be on the inside. Mm -hmm. So if we all leave, we cannot have a party by ourselves. The party needs a good mix. Right. And I believe in my party. And another thing that we've all been angry with is this politician is in party A this afternoon, party B this evening, tomorrow morning he's in party C. Mm. We, we have aspirants that have every single political party in Nigeria, they've, they they've been, been inside. 
That doesn't show commitment. It doesn't show that you have a plan. It just shows that personal ambition surmounts, you know, party, uh, I guess, manifesto. We often see them brag about it as to having had experience because they have moved around a lot and it's beginning to work. People would uh, point at them now in Nigeria, of course, to say, oh, yeah, he, he's moved around and so I'm sure he's gathered experience. That, that, that's no experience. That shows a lack of commitment. That shows a lack of principle. Why would you join a political party if you don't believe in its ideology? And because somebody has cheated you, doesn't mean you leave. It's like when you're building a house, some guy comes to your house and says, well, you cannot sleep here tonight. Do you pack your bags and go and start building a new house? No, you don't. Not. You do whatever it is that you need to get those imposters out of your house and you build it even stronger and even better. As a young person, I have faced a lot of challenges in my party. My party hasn't been greatest to me but we're here we've stayed we believe in this candidate we believe that these two candidates our president-elect and vice president-elect understand what it's like to be pushed down understand what it's like to be cheated understand what it's like to be betrayed so these essential components would build a better leader mm -hmm. would show that betrayal is not the way forward would show that building people is the way forward you have asiwaju who has built people in every single zone in nigeria he is the only leader if you look at the pdp candidate you cannot name five people in nigeria i cannot name five people in nigeria that this guy has championed likewise the labor party candidate i can't even name two people that the labor party candidate has championed in nigeria but i can name 50 people you can name at least 10 off the top of your head 10 people that asiwaju has made into something around nigeria and that's what Nigerians we need right I'm a young person we need mentorship there's no one there's no everything I've learned I've learned on my feet I've learned because I've entered places that I shouldn't have entered mm. and I've learned the mistakes from there I've entered places that wow you know I was ahead of the game getting there and I've learned but there was no one guiding me no one providing that, this that guidance exactly. no one providing this support which is essential in nation building mm. it is critical for you to grow the next generation I'll give you another example my classmate I went to the University of Glasgow my classmate, Fahad Al-Tafag, His Excellency, is a UAE ambassador to Nigeria. He started in 2018. He did so well that he's in charge of Africa right now. That is the kind of leadership they have in the UAE. They groom young people mm -hmm. and make sure they take over positions. But in our administration, we had ambassadors that went to other countries and didn't quite make it back. You know, so these are the things that the APC must check. The leaders in place must bring, encourage people, young people, build them up, opposition, build them up. You need healthy competition. True. Don't look at it like do or die. Don't mm -hmm. look at it like it's APC or nothing at all. No. If you don't win, it's the will of God. If you win, it's the will of God. But you must put in the essential ingredients that are needed for progress. You must work hard, you must interact with people, which is what you can see the leaders doing now. Exactly. All over the place, they're interacting. Some are buying ice cream and yes. giving to people. Some are asking, hey, what's the problem? Some are visiting hospitals mm. now. Some are going to churches. You know, the, I, I saw a Muslim a governor kneeling down at the pulpit, receiving blessings from pastors. Of course. <laughs> it's it's, it's, uh, it's expected. We often uh, get this during uh, the electionary season. But you didn't quite answer that part of my question question where I talked about uh, the performance of the APC, if you have to suggest or, or give us what you think is your opinion as to how the APC will fare uh, during the Guba polls in a couple of days, what would you say? Well, I, I think With the would, new we political would do, no, landscape? We would do better. We would do more than 12 states. You know, everyone got 12 states, which is a fair share, and NMPP got one state. I think NMPP will still retain their one state. Mm. But I honestly think the APC would do better. Cause but there are 28 states now. There are 28 states that are going to the polls now. So it's no longer that fair share. You know, I it, think, that makes it more interesting. Yes, from my own estimation, I think we will come away with 
15 states thereabouts, you know, and the rest will be shared between Labour Party. Labour Party will most likely clear the southeast, so that's five going to them already. Take a few bite in the south, south, you know, so maybe three or four going to them. Mm. So Labour Party may end with about eight or nine states, something like that, but their share of 12 will certainly reduce. Okay. Uh, and some of the that's because some of the factors that were playing in the presidential mm. no longer is in play in in the gubernatorial election. Now talking about apathy, do you do you also think there's going to be apathy? I mean, some people were discouraged and they lost uh, had said to have lost trust on the electoral umpire. Would you then say that we would see electorates no longer as interested as they are supposed to be coming to the uh, gubernatorial? You know, I, I think two things happened there. One, a complete lack of experience. You know, they've never been involved in the political process before mm. they are usually on big brother titan or exactly. one of those ones voting like a hundred times you know and when they've come into reality you know they've seen that it's not always as you expected your vote does not reflect on the when next person's, person's vote. vote you know and it's not popular on tv or popular on social media that wins it because the majority of nigerians are not actually on on social, social media. media so you could do social media polls morning tonight all you like but the reality is completely different that's one and two they've never been in the system to judge between I, i've been I, I'm, I'm young I'm, I'm 40 but i've been in this for 17 years mm. so i was at the 2007 election in Kogi State, I'll give you a typical example. Mm, I mean, I know you ran for Kogi yeah, State in 2019. Yeah, I ran in 2019, exactly. I ran for governor in 20. But in, in 2007, when the ballot papers came, they used black marker to remove the opposition. They just canceled it up. So all the ballot papers, you see PDP there, nice. But any other party, especially the candidate that they thought was, you know, you going to chance. win. Yes, black marker. So went to Supreme Court, Supreme Court canceled that, and the start, that's why Kogi State is off-season. Did the election again in 2008. We were on the field in Kogi State in 2008. While we were on the field waiting for election materials, they were already on TV declaring the result. Yes. Wow. Then 2011 got a bit better. They weren't, and there was violence in 2007, 2008. But you know, because the international uh, community was frowning heavily on mm. violence they modified the rigging mechanism so they'd allow you to vote go vote freely then the local government coalition centers were the master rigging centers so for example if there are 500 registered voters, voters. in the polling unit so INEC would send 500 um, ballot papers plus maybe five or ten percent so you'd get maybe 525 550 ballot papers but in reality only like a hundred a hundred and twenty are there so those hundred and twenty will vote the remaining 400 they would come in so when you come in to the coalition centers with those hundred and something votes they throw it in the dustbin then the 400 one they'd be stamping well uh, Tom printing, Tom printing, Tom printing, Tom printing, and that's the one that goes to the National Coalition Center, mm. and that's the one that's declared. Then the card reader was introduced. Then, sorry, the voters' card was introduced 2010, you know, 2009, 2010. Technology was brought in, but wasn't a mainstay. In 2015 was when Jega brought in the actual card reader to actually read the permanent the voter's stuff. card. So you see that the rigging reduced, reduced because people weren't too sure of what was going on. 2019, unfortunately, we saw another back to a uh, small setback. But 2023 has been outstanding. I have to say, everything worked perfectly. The only part that didn't work is the actual transmission of that result. I wish that has been the problem all along. Nigerians would have gone f so far in our electoral process right mm. now. But what I want to tell Nigerians is that that bloated figure 
that they used to produce mm. that no, those miraculous numbers that come out overnight has produced it can't happen again where did you vote in 2023 i mean uh, Kogi. in kogi state, in kogi state. and, and uh, what would you say about people who saw this uh, irregularities in the numbers not just uh, the fact that there were logistical problems our next staff arrived late to uh, the polling unit but let's talk about the irregularities i mean we have a party agent from all divide really who say we recorded this amount of and signed off this amount this number of uh, voters and this is what our party got but when it got to coalition it was different you just mentioned you just uh, referred to the, the polls as being almost perfect uh, or uh, even perfect really um, but i'll explain to you something right. right if you had a classroom of just 20 students hmm. and you set an exam the likelihood of three, four, five cheating is very, very high in the Nigerian context. is extremely high. You had 176,000 polling units. units. The likelihood of having 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 that have been, that people cheat mm. is very high. But overall, you're looking at 80%, 90% right. that were realistic yes there were issues in places and that's because to some people right it was do or die not to everybody if i'm in my own locality local government and i'm the master thug there or the master bad guy there and i needed to do something just to show my boss that i did something mm. i'd go and can to save face i'd go and cancel that polling unit result or even bring violence mm. but anywhere that i i neck identified violence that's cancelled anywhere that there was over voting cancelled so yes there are still mechanisms that need to be put in place to check a few of these issues that have emanated because we're nigerians we don't have the best reputation around the world so let's not lie to ourselves the biggest disservice we'll do to ourselves is to lie to ourselves and say we're perfect human beings why did INEC do that right. INEC is an entity run by people you, we even saw uh, the INEC chairman suspend the wreck uh, member I think from Sokoto yeah. State yeah one of the the wrecks so you find circumstances that people do commit you know crimes electoral fraud mm. when identified there is a process of redress take it to court you okay. know I encourage anybody that there's one that I've seen APC that some places that the numbers look you know I've seen PDP, same thing. I've seen Labour Party, where there's one, one Cynthia lady signed everywhere. Over, over, yes. Wrote, yes, wrote. So we've seen. It doesn't mean that the leaders of these or the candidates of these parties, I, I doubt if Peter will be called this Cynthia lady and say, Cynthia, this is what you are going to do. You are called Rick. Exactly. No. They just got proactive for no reason. Thank you. But now talking about redress, uh, we'll go for a short break. When we return, we return from that short break. Uh, we'll talk about how to gather everybody for the new administration and achieve that uh, governance of unity we were talking about. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us. of the day. Unwind with the reminiscence of the day's news from home and abroad. 
with Kaftan TV 7 p.m. News. Good to Abby Janos on Kaftan News at 7. It's good to have you join us on Kaftan TV News at 7. National Foreign News Headlines. Get balanced, accurate facts on the latest news in business, politics, entertainment, sports, and more. Live from our studios. Many thanks for watching. Join us again at Time TV News. My name is Sheila B.C. I'm from the Black Comedian of the Federal Republic. I tell you when it comes to the best of entertainment, the best of news, the best of information, something that is educative, you're right here at the best place to see that. It's Captain TV. Do you know what? Increase the volume. Keep watching. Don't touch the dial, okay? Uh -huh. It's your girl in Kechi Blessing Sunday. I want you all to keep watching Captain TV. Please keep watching Captain TV. It is the best TV station in the country. They're doing an amazing job. Please do not touch the dial. Keep watching. Thank you. In a world where information is vital to every individual, a platform where technology is a medium to pass information, you can always catch up on all information written in the newspapers, even without having one. Join us on The Press. Speaking live from the Abuja studio. On the punch for this morning. The Blueprint newspaper, Nigerian Tribune this morning. As we give you information and opinions about current events and topical issues on politics, business, sports, entertainment, weather forecasts, and lots more. In the local city, across all states, and across all countries. Showing daily on Star Times, Channel 124, 9 a.m. West African Time, only on Captain TV. Stay connected with us on our social media handles. I pursue the federal government to pay us our damage. YouTube, Captain TV. I very tricky one. And then uh, the, the, the bottom line is this. Website, www.captain.tv. Point is the youth must come together. The pendulum can swing in your favor. Instagram, Captain underscore TV. Captain TV. Imagine a beautiful world. Welcome back from that short break. We've been discussing with Prince Mustafa Mona Audu. We've been discussing how to achieve government of national unity in the new administration. Uh, again, uh, you've given us a good insight into the political landscape in Nigeria at the moment. But let's go to the president-elect, uh, His Excellency Asiwa Jamed Bolatinubu, who has emerged. And um, while he's been advised now to embrace all they are, they are opposition at the moment seeking redress in court. So do you think he would have a tough time getting everybody to uh, support his government? And uh, he is known to unite people and, and, and um, uh, figure out who is best for what. But should he see this best person in opposition and with, with the tension that there is at the moment, do you think he would still try to get that person? Uh, to be honest, I think the first thing that he did um, upon accepting his, uh, his victory was to stretch the olive branch to the PDP and Labour Party and NNPP. The task of building Nigeria cannot be done by the APC alone. But that being said, the team needs to be put together rather quickly. Right. There's no time to waste. So. Yes, the olive branch is being stretched out, is being handed out to the to the opposition. 
but there's also a time limit to what they can get from the system at this mm. stage. If you were to join and form government together now, what you would be, the positions available will be completely different from six months or a year or two years down the line. It doesn't mean that in two years we would not still be reaching out to bring others on board. We right. will, but what will be available would be less because, simply because those positions need to be filled by competent people, competent hands, in order for us to move forward as a nation. So if you look at the dynamics around now, just like I mentioned, from my own analysis, and I don't know if this is correct or not, but from my analysis, three main components or people form the obedient movement. Um, one, I'd say young people who, not just the NSAS group, but young people who felt that there's no room for them in both the APC or PDP. Two, the people from the Southeast who have not felt part of the APC project, who feel part of the Nigerian project, but don't feel carried along by the APC. And three, Christians, especially Northern Christians, who feel that, okay, we're a minority in the North, but we have tremendous value, and you're not taking, taking into us in here into consideration. But unfortunately, this wasn't the actual case. Mm. The Muslim-Muslim ticket wasn't about religion, but our own politicians, the APC politicians, mm. were the ones pushing Muslim, Muslim tickets simply because they wanted to be the running mate. They wanted to run with uh, His Excellency Asiwaju. So they said, oh, don't give us Muslim, Muslim ticket because of personal issues. I'll give you an example. Uh, Honorable Dogara, he said he can never, ever, ever support what a Muslim, exactly. Muslim ticket. It's, you know, an aberration. Mm. Yet today, he's more in Bauchi, he supports Muslim, Muslim ticket. So why is it not an aberration if you're so, uh, supporting a Muslim, Muslim ticket? Yet in the APC, when he was still with us, you know, he couldn't support it because he had his own ambitions. Right. Likewise, other people. And I was there when at the convention ground where this whole Muslim, Muslim topic started. A burst of text messages went round to everybody in the convention ground. And it said, if you vote for Asiwaju, you will be voting for a Muslim, Muslim ticket. That wow. is the first place it started. I know the people, I know, but no names, because this is us. You know, so if you're opposition, we can point you out. But because this of was us, within the party. Th this is within the party. So all this noise started within the party, not Nigerians. Mm. But if you have a message that hits you subliminally, you ignore the message once, you ignore it twice, it just registers in your subconscious. So when someone is discussing it, it now to you appears like an issue. But in reality, Nigeria has had Christian, Christian president, has had Muslim, Muslim president. And it has meant nothing to Nigerians. Mm. Nigerians really just want performance, you know. So that is what we're going to see in this incoming administration. Mm. Also, the Southeast, because they've not felt part of the project, in my humble opinion, I think if you do Muslim, 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 and Muslim, first, second, third, fourth, it's mm. going to be an issue. You know, talking about the, pre the Senate president, the Senate president yeah, and the, the, House of the House of Reps, Speaker of the House of Representatives. Right. So in order to bring everyone on board, in order to show value, in my own opinion, opinion. nothing to do with anyone else, nothing to do with our leaders. Mm. In my own opinion, our leaders should look at the electoral results and make a decision. How do we bring the Southeast on board? Mm. How do we make them part of the APC project? Because it is clear that the Southeast feel part of the Nigerian project. They just don't feel part of the APC project. project. So how do we bring them on board? What position should we give to them of this top four positions? Likewise, the Christians of the North. It's very important. But you also look at, I'm from the North Central. Mm. We delivered four states, more than any other zone no, in no. Nigeria. Exactly. The other one is Southwest that gave us also four states. But if you look at Northwest and Northeast, it's one and two states. 
you know you look at southeast zero you look at um uh south south i think they gave us one or Port two Tarko, states the, um, rivers, river state, yes. rivers and i think we got a, a, a cross river, cross river as well, yes yeah. so we got two so because as north central we delivered doesn't mean you should give us all the juicy positions give us good positions but leave enough for others but give us more because we've delivered give us more positions right but in, in giving us more don't give us all the top ones give us a mix a good mix of one or two top positions mm. and maybe very good number of, of of other positions and then reward system ministerial good appointments things like that that can go around and show value apc has had a problem of giving good reward right. you know a lot of every single real apc member will tell you that they've worked so hard but the people that come to take over office they never saw them most of the people in office right now didn't work hard but that's the truth most of the people appointed in this present government and that is why the apc did not have as many votes or one of the reasons why we didn't have as many votes mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why people rebelled against us mm -hmm. you know they couldn't see people that they could relate to people came from nowhere so there was a lot of anti-party activity exactly. going on there were a lot of, even presidency a lot of people in the presidency worked against the party. They worked against His Excellency Asiwaju. They canceled the Naira, and we can still feel the lingering effects today because they said he was going to buy all the votes in Nigeria. All lies. And they canceled the money. And today, he won. Which votes did he buy? They can't accuse us of, of buying votes. Now the accusation is something else. Okay, so, now, now I just, I just want to um, continue from where you stopped, where you talked about uh, credibility. And we thought by having the same faith ticket, it will, it will start, uh, it will be precedent to looking at credibility and uh, the precedence of whoever would emerge uh, in whatever political position. What I mean here is that we will no longer look at the uh, ethnic um, et ethnicity of that person or look at the religious leanings of this person and look more into the credibility of the person. Yeah. Do you think Nigeria is ripe if uh, Asiwaju, for instance, comes out to say, you know what, despite having a same fate ticket uh, and having the, the running mate of vice president now, uh, as as a Muslim from the north, I have seen credibility in another Muslim from the north. Do you think Nigeria is ready, despite whoever, despite uh, whoever emerges? I, I, I think sensibilities are important. This is what this election has shown us. Right. That, you know, the church came out to to vote. The church encouraged people to vote for. They simply said, "It's time for power shift. Mm. Don't vote for." anybody that is not a Christian. So there was, it's clear, uh, power is in the north, so you say it's time for power ship, meaning it should go to the south, mm -hmm. then you say, don't vote for Muslim, Muslim. So there's only one what person that exactly. fits that, Peter Obi. So you can see that a lot of these things, whether we thought, because I know that His Excellency Asiwa Jubala Metinobu went for who he can work best with. We've seen a lot of presidents and vice presidents that just don't get They're along. Long, exactly. So you need somebody that, one, you can trust intrinsically. It's very important. In addition to that, you need someone with capacity. And that is what he went for. But our politicians twisted it and made it mean something else. And it caught fire. So in order for you to douse that flame, mm. you must address that sensibility. In order for you to show that they matter. Mm. You must address that. So we've gotten what we want as president and vice president. We can look look at the broad spectrum and say, okay, for any other position, if you are a competent Muslim from the north, we'll find you this other position. If you are a competent Muslim from the south, we'll find you this other position. But if you are a competent Christian from the south, here you go, have this one, just to change the face of things. But competence is critical Amongst, amongst all everything. competencies, if you look at the history of Asiwaju in Lagos, Lagos. and you look at the history of Kashim Shatima mm -hmm. in Borno, unfortunately, the media doesn't show us in the best of light. But Borno is one of the most beautiful, Meduguri is one of the most developed 
states in and cities in Nigeria, by far the series of road networks, the development of public schools, you know, the level of even succession. Today, if you go anywhere and you say Zulum, everybody says, wow, a, yeah. what a great governor. But succession matters. Who picked that great governor? For continuance. Exactly. Kashim Shatima. It's, what work did Kashim Shatima do? Go to Borno. The amount of public schools with air conditioning is unbelievable. The amount of work that they've put in there is in a place that is ravaged by insecurity. So you can see, if you go to Lagos, what happened in Lagos? You can see that, ah, in Lagos, X, Y, Z happened in 99. Before Asiwaju came on board, Admiral boys were all over the place. I remember one incident. I'll never forget this. So we're driving in Lekki. Then it was a single lane. So I had gone to visit my friend Suleiman in, in Lekki. And he had a flat tire. And he got out of his car. He said, Musti, run! Picked up his bag, locked the door, and started running. So me too. I came out. I didn't see anybody. I started running because he was running. And guess what? Less than one minute later, like... 10, 15 Agbero boys just came out. We ran and jumped the fence of a bank. I think it was Intercontinental Bank then. We jumped the fence of Intercontinental Bank and stood with the police and the security till we called somebody else to come and pick us. That is how scary it Lagos used to, used to be in those days. These same Agbero boys were transformed to LASMA keeping order, maintaining law and order, mm. making sure drivers don't... I remember the Lekki Express, the Lekki Road now. I had people that used to work in the bank, uh, friends and, and family that worked in the bank. They would leave the house at 4 a.m. to get to the bank at 8 a.m. Four hours of lack of productivity. This was rampant in Lagos. But if you look at the roads now, it's a 10-lane expressway. This is what we want. Someone that can take the problems of Nigeria that we are facing mm. and transform it and make life better for us and make it income generating. You know, you can generate. Last month generates income right now. Uh, the Lucky Expressway generates income, income right now. Right. This is what we want. Productivity as Nigerians. And people talk about Asiwaju. Oh, he, he's, uh, he put this person in place. He put that. That is called a plan. That is called a vision. You put somebody in pl Every single governor in Nigeria is putting their replacement, whether we want to admit it or not. But how I many governors are succeeding? Well, there's a fine line between godfatherism and mentorship yeah. or the need for that continuance. And the fear Nigerians often have, when we talk about godfatherism, we're not uh, talking about it in the good light. Yeah, it, exactly. could, it could mean mentorship. However, it just means that uh, the person who is proceeding has that influence yeah. all over again. Yeah. To, to uh, and, uh, and it's not necessarily uh, uh, positive. And, and that is, yes, you're right. It's not necessarily positive. All but the time. in this case, right. in this particular case, two of them have shown extreme positivity that's one and two we are quick to cast our good people in bad light and the bad people in good light that's in nigeria the people that you see them praising are usually the criminals the people that you see them trying to subjugate trying to bring down are the people who can actually help do you understand in my state in kogi the most incompetent governor got nine years Meanwhile, the one that can perform got four years and fought all the way. That's it. The one that could perform created Obajana, which created the richest black man on the planet. planet. Do you understand? But yet he only got four years. He was rigged out by PDP and they fought him till his last breath. Meanwhile, the one that cannot perform, the one that has zero competence, let him go. Cool. Let him go. That is Nigeria. Our most incompetent people are the ones that are leading. But if you go outside of Nigeria, you see us flourishing, you see us performing, you see us doing well. Local government chairman is supposed to be the one that is closest to the people. But it is the most local, the most incompetent, the biggest thug, the biggest minus that is all our majority of our local government chairman. This is what we need to change in Nigeria. We need to cast the good people in good light. And honestly, I believe that we would begin to see 
a certain level of transformation, we would begin to feel economic independence, we would begin to feel that joy and happiness. You know, that success that we've been waiting for, we've been needing. Mm. I believe that Nigerians will see it in this administration because we have two people that are extremely competent and understand the use of technology, the use of young people, the mix between young and old, the mix between ethnicity and conflict resolution. Those are the critical ingredients. Okay. While the president-elect might have the desire to assuage the, the, those parts of the country, uh, the parts of the country, rather, that might feel aggrieved and feel uh, um, maligned, would you say that the 10th Assembly, with the composition of oh, about eight political parties in that, would also um, be, I don't want to use the word loyal, <laughs> loyal to the body language of the president, or would you see a, a better synergy? And you're, you're, we're now talking about uh, who would possibly emerge as Senate president. And when we talk about that, it's still in the hands of, of, of the senators, Senate, really, we, despite what the president, the yeah. president-elect might, might wish. Uh, but how do you think he would achieve having this balance, uh, despite having eight different political parties in the 10th Assembly? I, I think consultation. Right. You know, what has affected us previously is a lack of consultation a lack of understanding, a lack of synergy between ourselves, especially in the APC. So because of that, we've had different factions in the party working at odds with each other. When we first came in, there was a boost of text message going around saying, Mr. President wants to see all the APC senators in International Conference Center. At 8 a.m., all the senators got up, dressed up nicely, put on their Sunday best and troop to the, the ICC. Meanwhile, the orchestrators of that had already planned at night, hey, they don't want to give me this position, so this is how we're going to share it. While they were there waiting for Mr. President, they had already gone, sat down, snuck inside the National Assembly from the quorum and shared the position. This is because of a lack of synergy. This is because of lack of communication, working together. So I think that in order for us to achieve success mm. mr president must work hand in hand with others he's the leader but as a leader you must first listen to what people are saying it doesn't mean you're going to work with everything but when people feel like they can communicate to you it's easier for them to listen so he can provide guidance likewise the party should provide guidance but in my honest opinion the guidance should be based on the electoral results we should look at it where did we do well? Where, Where didn't did we do, do well? well? How do we reward those that did well? How do we reward those that didn't do well? So that next time around, do they buy see. into the APC project. Yeah. But if we do like the last time and say, you know, we would only support those that voted for us, we're going to, they were, we're out. We're, we're, we're going to lose this coming election because the electoral process will continue to improve will continue to improve over and over again mm. till it becomes an automated process, till it becomes like maybe the Big Brother Nigeria voting system that the young you could, people are yes, used you could to. See, you could see in real time who is voting. So I, I believe we'll honestly get there. But the way to accomplish this, National Assembly, the senators should sit down within themselves, dialogue, talk to opposition, because they're not really opposition in that sense of the word they're just opposition because they are a different party but the goal is exactly the same the development and the progress of nigeria making laws that are good for people like the electoral law right. looking at the electoral law and saying hey 90 percent of it was good this 10 percent we need Let's to fix that right. people that have that kind of conscience and i believe that this spread has shown that if you are not for Nigeria, mm. Nigerians would vote you out. So a lot of governors lost out. A lot of senators lost out. New people came in that before would never even have dreamt of, of winning. You have SDP, you have NMPP, you have Labour, you have PDP, you have APC, you have ADC in Kogi State. ADC too made, mm. made it. So you have these people across board 
simply because Nigerians were not satisfied with what we were offering. So we need to improve, we need synergy, and we need to take especially the Southeast along, we need to take especially Christians along, and we need to take young people especially young people because young people are the drivers of this look at us here now in this studio we're all young everybody behind the camera everybody producing all the people who did the election here the police the INEC exactly. the security agencies everybody is young so why then when the young people are done with all of this no young ministers the youngest minister in this say, late 50s minister of youth is late 50s so you know there's there's a disconnect you know these are my ministers and i love them you know i love my party but i should be able to say truth i should be able to speak truth to power oh. as a young person if not i'm doomed if not we're all doomed you know so this is what is affecting us you know there are several sectors for example that are for young people science and technology ict agriculture, medicine, you know, these are specifically tailored for young people. Having an old person there doesn't help. Exactly. You know, and then you also have ministries that are, these are the most unproductive ministries on the planet. You have Ministry of Health that has 200, 300, 400 billion naira budget that doesn't make one single tablet. You have agriculture that doesn't have one tuba of yam and the budget is 400 billion. How does that make any sense? You should take half that budget, look for the young guys in the agri sector and start partnering and investing with them, creating processing centers, developing your, I, for example, I make electric cars. I'm, I'm a young person. I know that environment is my forte. Okay. I'm one of the foremost leaders in Nigeria in environment and in technology. Mm. I, I make cars. How many people can say that? But with no, no, very little support. So imagine if the government were to support a venture like mine. That's the end of fuel scarcity, the end of petrol problems in Nigeria. We will still be generating our income by exporting Don't it, you know, but we would have no issues with queues. Now imagine you spread this into the power sector. I know a lot of young people doing great things in solar technology, photovoltaic factories that they are setting up. They have modular, uh, modular power plants, things like that. This is what needs to be encouraged. And you need to encourage young people that have the capacity. The power sector needs to be led by young person. We understand what has been done. We have been in this sector for many years. Mm. But because of the lack of support, they bring some older guy that doesn't know the issues in the power sector to come and oversee a sector. And guess what will happen? He'll fail. He becomes fail. dormant. He becomes now, dormant. hypothetically speaking, if this administration starts uh, uh, like the, the other administration, the Buhari administration, and maybe start bringing in uh, people who we know as, a, as citizens would not uh, perform as well. What would be your suggestion? Because there's this wave of, of awareness and the need for accountability and transparency and the need for development in the country. Absolutely. What would you think uh, the citizens should do? For me personally, I would object. I would go against, I would not leave the party. I would go against the party and I have a history of that. I felt, the whole country felt that the APC was playing games with our presidential election by having a caretaker chairman with a mandate of six months. Mm. They gave the mandate of six months, six months turned to 12 Five months, 12 months turned to 18 months. And the whole country was quiet. What did we do as young people? We formed a group, we took over, we went on TV, we sacked the committee, we appointed ourselves as chairman, we set a date for convention and we were going to carry out that national convention. Then guess what happened? All the governors came together and did the exact same thing we did. They decided to sack the caretaker committee. They decided to, when we said February for convention, they came out and said, well, we're doing APC convention in February. We said it's a lie. We're going ahead to do it on February 22nd. Then they now came out and said they are doing it February 29th. Then guess what? They now said, well, we're moving it to March. This is how it happened. So the power is with us. If we see 
people that are not after six months one year people that don't have the capacity to deliver i will come back here, here. and i will speak to nigerians <laughs> right. and i will tell nigerians thank you for voting for us and i will speak to mr president tell mr president this is not what nigerians voted for but i know the president and the vice president that we have and i know that won't be the story okay. the story will be young competent people will be mixed with all that competent people of every faith you okay. know a uh, prince mustafa mona audu thank you so much i liked where you stopped and that uh, you are very encouraged by uh, the president-elect and his uh, vice well that that's a good place to stop we'll see how <laughs> it pans out we would we will keep inviting you if you would let us thank, thank you. you so much <laughs> for being part of the program it's been interesting you know what they say time uh, passes when uh, you're having fun absolutely. i had i had a, a wonderful time uh, talking uh, to oh, wow. you it's been an that. hour already it has been <laughs> an hour <laughs> so this is where we would draw the curtains on joy asanye live my name is joy asanye i'll be back tomorrow with more do have a wonderful evening